called um, the ratio analysis is called a gross profit. I remember, so we can have we have income statement last time talk about. Mm -hmm. People may ask you what is the profit of your company. Okay, so what's the profit? What is the profit of your company? How are you gonna answer this question? What is the profit of your company? Gross profit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this question uh, is hard for you to answer because um, you need to you need to ask. Okay, please specify uh, what kind of profit you're talking about. Okay, are you are you means gross profit, operating profit, or net profit, right? So the profit uh, they have a different meaning. So different type of profit. So you look at the income statement. Look at here. The first line is your sales, okay? The sales, because uh, you see in your, um, the 10K form, this is sales is also called, uh, the sales is also called, another thing is called revenue, okay? The sales equal to revenue, so in, income statement, this is uh, the first line. Okay, be careful with this. I think um, student asking me one of the questions is about, oh, where can I find the revenue? Okay, your revenue is your total sales. Okay, the first line, that's your revenue. So the, the, the total sales, total revenue minus the cost of goods sold is your gross profit. Okay, this, the third line, this one here is a gross profit. Use your gross profit divided by your total sales. Okay, you see this is a five seventy five divided by one thousand four hundred fifty. Uh, this statement is uh, the value is in thousand unit, thousand U.S. dollars unit. So actually, this is one meaning four hundred fifty thousand. This is five hundred seventy five thousand. Okay, that's the gross profit is thirty nine. 0.7%, okay. Next, we talk about uh, another one. It's called operating profit. So you can see the operating profit is your gross profit uh, minus operating expenses and a minus depreciation expenses, okay. So this is going to be your operating income, operating income, operating profit are the same thing, okay? I just uh, wanted to let you know operating profit um, is also called operating, okay, operating income, okay? You see there's another name for operating profit? Okay, in that, you, when you look at the uh, the statement, income statement, as a uh, this line typically they call EBIT. Okay, so EBIT. Do you know what is EBIT? Earnings before interest and taxes. Yes, exactly. So the operating profit is also. Uh, called EBIT, so you can have um, operating profit, okay, operating profit divided by your total sales. Okay, that's operating profit. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, next that we talk about is a uh, net profit. So the net profit is your operating, this is the operating profit, and minus your interest expenses, and the, the taxes. So you exclude the interest and the tax, that's your net income. So you use your net income divided by your total sales. 
That's your net profit margin. Okay. <clears throat> so sometimes we call profit margin. Profit margin. There is another uh, another name is also uh, we call a uh, uh, profit margin. Okay, profit margin. There's another name is called a uh, return on sales. The return on sales. So why they call return on sales? Because you look at all these three, uh, the the numerator is a different kind of profit. The denominator is sales, right? Creating profit divided by sales, net income divided by sales. Okay, something. That's what we call also is called a uh, profit margin. It's also called a return on sales. Okay. And next we talk about, okay, you notice that all those uh, profit margins, we only use the data from income statement. Uh, it's, uh, there is nothing related to, uh, related to balance sheet. So now we have a return on, asset okay that's a, the example i talk about return on asset is your net income divided by your total asset okay net income divided by your total asset okay so you can see this um uh, the net income you got from income statement and the total asset you got from the balance sheet okay and also the most another important thing is called a net uh, income divided by your total owner's equity. Okay, total owner's equity. So you have the return on equity. Okay, next that we talk about is called the basic earning power. So basic earning power is your operating income divided by your total asset. Okay, basic earning power. So that's all those uh, profitability ratio and we uh, talk about. So the profitability ratio including all those um, uh, ratios. Uh, we can use the formulas and also I show you where you can get the data from the balance sheet and income statement. Okay, uh, how do you know this is a, when you get a ratio, how do you know this is a good or this is not good? Okay, for example, uh, you got a basic earning power 13%. Okay, is this good or this is not good? I don't know. Yeah. Mm, I think it's bad. You mm -hmm. should earn more. Okay. If there's no, um, um, like for example, you have to compare it to maybe another one or the year before or the year after. Exactly, so, uh, yes, you're very right. So it's, you don't know if this number is good or not good. So the, basically you need to compare. If you don't compare, you don't know, right? So you need to compare so basically, uh, how do you know this is good? You compare with the basic earning power from last year. Okay, if this one increases, that's good. Uh, uh, your company's profitability getting better from last year. And uh, also you can compare this number with your competitor or the industry average. You compare with other uh, business in the same industry. Okay, if your basic earning power is higher than your competitor, oh, you think that's a better, so it's good. So you need to compare in order to, uh, to come out with a conclusion, right? Okay, so that's what we call is, uh, when is uh, after you get the ratio, you do a historical comparison, and also you do industry comparison. So you have um, two, uh, two things you can do. Okay, one is called industry comparison. Okay, 
you compare with the industry, and then you do a historical uh, comparison. And so, so that you know that ratio is better or this knob is getting worse. Okay, so for all the probability ratio, I wanted to uh, notice uh, that, I want you to notice that all the profitability ratio is the, the higher the better, okay? So for profitability, okay, profitability ratio is um, the higher the better. You can see all the numbers you want and that basic earning power be higher. You want the return on set equity be higher instead of lower. Okay, uh, this is only for profitability ratio. It doesn't mean for all the other ratios. Okay, so we're gonna talk about later some of the ratio I need to uh, you uh, to pay great attention that is not to the higher the better, okay? Um, other than profitability, and there is another group of ratio analysis is called a liquidity ratio. Okay, liquidity ratio measures the ability of the firm to meet its short-term financial obligation. Okay, sh short-term financial obligation. For example, uh, you have uh, you have to pay your credit card, and you have to pay your mortgage. So basically, you pay your credit card is going to be a short term. So you have months, you know, to months um, basis. But you pay your mortgage is a long term. Okay. So this is the most important is uh, to see if the company uh, has enough short term asset to uh, pay off as a short term debt. Okay, the current ratio uh, is current asset divided by current liability. And the quick ratio is your current asset minus inventory divided by your current liability. Okay, so now we go see what is your current asset. Okay, the current asset, okay, including, you see the current asset including your cash, accounts receivable and inventory. Okay, all those are considered to be your current assets. Okay, uh, do you have a cash? Okay, you have money or you have um, account receivable of the, uh, you sold your products, you haven't received that money yet. Okay, and or you do have any uh, materials or products in your warehouse, that's inventory. Your total current asset, and then you have uh, divided by your total current liability. So the total current liability includes your accounts payable, okay, short-term uh, debt you have to pay, and you have um, uh, accruals, so also accruals. So that's your current uh, liability. So we wanted to um, make sure so you have uh, enough current asset to pay off your current liability, so the current ratio. And then you have um, quick ratio. So the quick ratio uh, is that all your asset, you have to exclude your inventory. You do not count on your inventory. You know, some of the company, the, their inventory can convert into cash quickly, but some of the products they can't. You know, for example, uh, I have a friend, you know, he sell um, uh, like a dishwasher. No, as a detergent, you know, to do, to uh, clean the dishes. And that's a, you know, the inventory, they have a lot, they can sell it pretty quick because everybody need it. Um, but, you know, one of uh, another friend, they, he sell uh, petroleum uh, equipment to do oil you know, uh, petroleum equipment. So it's very difficult to sell one product. It's, uh, uh, so that uh, depends on the, uh, the features or properties of your inventory. So that's why the quick ratio exclude the inventory because some inventory can convert to quick cash very quick, some of can't. 
Okay, this is uh, uh, the quick ratio. Okay, the, also both two ratios, the higher the better. Uh, we wanted to make sure the, uh, when you go apply for a loan in the, uh, from the bank, typically they ask you for current ratio be greater than two, okay? And a quick ratio greater than one. Okay, that's uh, uh, typically uh, what they talk about. Okay, there's a two current ratio greater than two, quick ratio greater than one. Okay, this is also quick ratio as called acid test ratio. Acid test ratio greater than one. This is also called uh, the quick ratio, also called acid test ratio. Okay, uh, next groups is very important. We talk about the is the debt. Okay, the measure of the company's ability uh, to pay off the debt. Uh, we have debt ratio, debt to equity ratio, and the times interest earned. Okay, and times interest earned. Uh, you can see the debt ratio is your uh, is your total debt is a total liability, okay? Your current liability plus long-term debt is total liability divided by your total asset. And then you have um, your total debt divided by your total owner's equity. Um, that's a um, debt to equity ratio. Okay, so there's another one is uh, called a basic uh, times interest earned. Times interest earned is your operating income divided by your interest expenses. Okay, uh, this is uh, all the debt ratio. Uh, empirically, so we want the times interest earned greater than four. That's most of the time uh, you might consider is um, Okay, times interest earned, times interest earned, greater than four. Okay, so that means your operating income at least four times uh, higher than your current interest expenses. Okay, another group of the issue analysis is called asset uh, activity ratio. So the asset activity ratio is your um, uh, uh, how effectively the company using that asset to generate uh, sales. So uh, this is a, a category, a um, very important category, including uh, turnover ratio. Okay, is a turnover. So we talk about that including uh, the average collection period. So this one, I wanted to uh, point out that. So average collection period is not the higher the better, it's the lower the better. Okay, so you wanna lower that average collection period. Okay, so I, ACP, I wanted to let you know is that average collection period, okay, uh, the lower, the better, okay? So the profitability, all of them are higher the better, but for average collection period is the, the lower the better. So you, you don't want it to spend a lot of time to collect your debt, right? So the, you want it to collect your debt the sooner the better. Um, so average collection period is your accounts receivable divided by the average daily credit sales. So this is your sales divided by 365. That's your daily uh, sales. So average collection period is uh, going to be how many days? So you see that this one is 180 days to collect the payment of the product you sold. Okay, 
And the another one is called inventory turnover is your uh, total sales divided by your inventory. So it's asking you how many uh, times you can get your inventory as, uh, sold. And this is a uh, um, total asset turnover ratio. Okay, your sales divided by your total asset. Okay. Um, okay, any questions about this? No, I'm good so far. Okay, good. So uh, uh, what I'm seeing is that we cover all those ratios as I give you our example because I I see the PowerPoint slides uh, I have uh, over there. Uh, didn't show you, you know, where you can get the data. So this one uh, is much, you know, of, uh, of where so, so I can show you where you get the data, which statement you're going to use. Um, so the ratio I introduced is not limited to all this. Okay, there are more ratios, so different type of ratios. So it just, uh, if you get the, uh, the materials I post on Blackboard, you can see there are quite a lot other different type of ratios. But basically the, the, uh, the logic or the, uh, is uh, pretty much the same, okay? So don't be surprised, oh, I have some ratio, you know, it's not covered, but you know, for sure that's not going to be covered, but I, most of the common use the ratio. That's uh, what I'm talking about, okay. Uh, you can see this is uh, uh, this groups of ratio. Typically, most of the time, is the sales is on the numerator, right? The profitability ratio we have the sales as the uh, denominator. Now, these groups they have the common features as that uh, the sales as a numerator. Okay, that's all called turnover. So what a turnover that means, so what a turnover means, sales as a numerator. Okay. So that's a, uh, uh, also uh, check the unit, okay, you know, some of the ratio inventory turnover is a 2.3 times, it's now 2.3 percent, okay, for the uh, we call average collection period is 108 days, right? This is uh, 0 0.57 times, okay? This is times, it's not 0.57%. You know, some students, they confuse about this and they put 0.7%. Seven, 0 .7, uh, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> another groups of the ratio is uh, um, is called uh, PE ratio, price to earning ratio. So this is a group of ratio we call the market ratio. The market ratio is the stock price of the uh, per share divided by the earnings per share. So earnings per share is a very important ratio. And so using the net income divided by the, okay, whereas the earn, earnings per share, the APS earnings per share is your net income divided by the total number of shares outstanding. So your, that's your earnings per share. Okay, this is the stock price. Using the stock price divided by the earnings per share, that's your PE ratio. And another one is called a market to book ratio. Market to book ratio is the market price per share, the stock price divided the book value per share. So what is your book value? So the book value basically is your total owner's equity divided by the total number of shares outstanding. So that's owners, uh, that's a book market uh, value per share, okay? Stock price divided by market value per share, a book value per share is market to book ratio. <clears throat> okay, once you got all this, uh, we talk about it, 
you know, for example, you got a ratio and you put together and to see the ratio of your company. Uh, so the example we used uh, from that company is uh, Excalibur. Is Excalibur, and this is uh, the industry. So you see this ratio is higher than industry, right? And this one, uh, return on assets is lower than industry. So uh, what that means, because it give you, uh, you can make a conclusion. That's what we call a SWOT analysis. Uh, you look at the strengths of the companies and what is the weakness. Okay, the weakness is that the company's return on asset, return on equity uh, has is low uh, because uh, they are productivity problem, right? Okay. <clears throat> and so also you can see the, uh, the ratio you got from this year comparing to the ratio last year. Oh, you can see, oh, this is a per dollar value of earnings, um, uh, you know, decreasing and that's, uh, we think the company's uh, prospects is going to be worse than last year, okay? So that's uh, something you can conclude based on uh, the historical comparison and the um, industry comparison. Okay. Um, at last, I wanted to uh, show you uh, what is a DuPont equation. So actually some of the ratio, they have a relation. Uh, they can connect to each other. For example, the DuPont uh, equation is that if you quit return on asset, okay? Actually return on asset is your net profit margin times your total asset turnover. Okay. And there is a modified DuPont equation. The modified DuPont equation is uh, return on equity is equal to your net profit margin times total asset turnover times your equity multiplier. So what is equity multiplier? It's your total asset divided by your total equity, owner's equity. So this is called a modified DuPont equation. And in your, uh, in that, uh, the question you work on, you also have um, okay, economic value added, okay, market value added. So you can check the formula for both of them, uh, but it's not covered uh, in this slide, but it, it is in the materials. You can, you can see how to calculate economic value added and the market value added, okay. Uh, timing is um, almost down, so uh, we're gonna wait for you uh, after five minutes, we start another session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, just uh, 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 come back in five minutes. Right. Okay.